Praise the Lord and welcome to another week uh, with the Church of Restoration. Wherever you are, I just want you to lift up your hands, give God a wave, say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for another service. Thank you for, the, for another day. I can see, I can hear, I can eat, I can smell, and I can give you praise. And so I want to welcome you to this morning's service. I believe that God has something special in store just for you. Enjoy the service with us in Jesus' mighty name.
on walking in the anointing. Say walking in the anointing. Say it again, walking in the anointing. You can walk in your own strength and in the natural and you can also walk in the anointing. Amen. You remember the story of, of, of Peter and uh, John at the, at the uh, temple gate. The gate, uh, uh, as they went up to the temple, the man said to them, uh, give us some money, some alms. He said, I need some money from you and uh, uh, we know that Peter said to him I don't have silver I don't have gold but what I have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk amen and so Peter had something that was more valuable than gold and silver he had the anointing upon him hallelujah Peter had the anointing this was the same Peter that uh, uh, was with Jesus and uh, when Jesus needed Peter's help so much and needed him to acknowledge who he is, Peter said, I don't know who Jesus is. He denied Jesus. He was fearful. Amen. He ran away. He hid himself. He went back to fishing. Uh, he turned his back on Jesus. But this was the same Peter that could say to this man, silver and gold I don't have. But what I have... I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Hallelujah. So when Peter walked in the anointing, when you walk in the natural, then uh, you will get natural results. But when you walk in the supernatural, in the anointing power of God, then you will get supernatural results. Say supernatural. Say it again, supernatural. So we are not in church because we want natural results. We are in church because we know we serve a supernatural God. We serve a God that goes beyond natural. Hallelujah. We heard earlier on, when in the natural people say it's not possible, then in the supernatural God say all things are possible. Hallelujah. In the natural, when people say that, there's no cure for your sickness. Then in the supernatural, God say, by my stripes, you are healed. Hallelujah. When in the natural, the people say, your children will never make it. They will never be delivered. Then in the supernatural, God say that the anointing shall break every yoke upon your children. Hallelujah. And they will be saved by the power of God. Hallelujah. When in the natural, uh, the people say you'll never be able to preach the gospel or you'll never be able to do the work of the Lord because of this and that and that. Then in the supernatural, God say, with God, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. So we are not here this morning 
because we want to walk in the natural. We are here this morning because we want to walk in the supernatural. Hallelujah. I don't serve Jesus because I want to walk in my own strength and according to my own ways and my own ideas and my own mindset. I serve Jesus because I want to walk in his power. Hallelujah. And when I walk in his power, then I will see the power of Jesus Christ being manifested. When I walk in my own strength, then I only see those things which I can do manifested. But when you walk in the power, of God, then you will see the things of the supernatural manifested. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me if you have your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 4, uh, verse number 6. Zechariah with the fear, verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4, verse number 6. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was calculating this morning. I was saying to Esther, she said, no, perhaps your calculations is out. I was calculating this morning. In my time in the ministry, I must have preached over 5,000 sermons. She said, well, Dad, don't you think it's a bit more? Well, that's just my own calculation. I, was, I must have preached over 5,000 sermons all over the world. And, uh, uh, but I was listening this, I think this morning, I was listening to the testimony of John Wesley. John Wesley died at the age of 88, and he preached 40,000 sermons all over the world. So I thought to myself, my goodness gracious, if that's what God can do, then uh, uh, what we've done is just the beginning. Hallelujah. So I'm already gearing myself, if Jesus spares me, to preach many, many more service, sermons all over the world, all over Africa, wherever God send me. Because uh, 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 if God has anointed you, then God wants to appoint you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. If God has anointed you, he wants to appoint you to do his work and to do his miracles in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Say, I'm, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. And you're going to learn to walk in that anointing and operate in the anointing. Hallelujah. And for that anointing to increase, because the anointing can do anything. Praise God. Let's read verse 6. So he answered and said to me, uh, uh, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. This was the prophet Zechariah speaking to this leader. And he said, they were about to reestablish and to rebuild the temple uh, that was destroyed. And the Lord said, and he says, this thing is not going to be done by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. By my spirit, by the power of the anointing. And this, this task that seemed impossible will be done not by your own might, not by your own power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Hallelujah. We will accomplish extraordinary things in our lifetime if we can have an understanding that we are limited and God is limitless. If we can have an understanding that it is the anointing that will break every yoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that will break the yoke of financial bondage. It's the anointing that will break the yoke of sickness. It's the anointing that will break the yoke of sin. It's the anointing that will break the yoke of the devil. It's the anointing that will break the yoke of uh, misunderstanding. It's the anointing. If we can understand that it's not by might, not by power, that we will see the supernatural manifestation of the Lord, it's by the spirit hallelujah glory to God we can see that in the world today we are trying all types of of of, of educational uh, 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 knowledge to solve problems to solve physical problems to solve spiritual problems to solve financial problems but we see that things just go 
It's going backward instead of going forward. The more we come with knowledge, the more things are going backward. The more the poor are being destitute, they are being, they are being uh, uh, almost like annihilated, the poor people. We see sin is increasing. We see that uh, turmoil, financial turmoil, is at an all-time high. You know why? And political instability is, 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 is what we have never seen before. Do you know why? Because we're trying to fix things in our own ability. We're trying to fix things with our own strength. We're trying to fix things uh, with our own power. And here uh, the prophet says to Zerubbabel, you will not be able to fix these things in your own strength, in your own might, but alone by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. By the anointing of God, every yoke shall be broken. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. <clears throat> the anointing of the Lord breaks every yoke. Isaiah 10, 27. For the anointing shall break every yoke. Hallelujah. The anointing shall break every yoke of sickness. The anointing shall break every yoke of lack. The anointing shall break every yoke of sin. The anointing shall break every yoke of vice. The anointing shall break every impossibility in a family, in a community, in a nation, and in a world. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Say thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Say thank you, Lord, for the anointing. Say thank you, Lord, for the anointing. And it's time that we start walking in the anointing. I say it's time that we start walking in the anointing. We've had too much of man's flesh. We've had too much of man's understanding and man's wisdom. We want to see the power of God, hallelujah, upon every Christian, upon every tongue-talking believer. In the name of Jesus Christ, give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Hallelujah. 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 The world is filled with beautiful messages. Thank God for messages. The world is filled with technology. The world is filled with theology. The world needs something more. The world needs to experience the power of the anointing. Hallelujah. And we represent that power. I say we represent that power. We have to walk in that power. Hallelujah. So that the people like Peter and John walked in the anointing. And that man experienced the anointing. It's only when we walk in the anointing that the people will experience the anointing. It's only when we walk in the anointing uh, that we'll see the manifestation uh, of the power of Almighty God. Hallelujah. Otherwise, uh, it becomes uh, a man-made thing. And man-made things... Uh, cannot uh, do God-ordained things. Man-made things uh, can only do man-made things. Uh, but God-ordained things uh, can do the impossible, uh, can do the God things. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. Isaiah 10, 27, I just want to read it. And it shall come to pass. Say, it shall come to pass. Say it again. It shall come to pass. In that day, Say in that day, that his burden, say his burden, will be taken away from my shoulder. It says your shoulder there, but I'll say my shoulder. And his yoke from my neck. And the yoke will be destroyed. Because of the anointing. The yoke will be destroyed. From what? From off us. Hallelujah. 
in that day I believe we are in that day the day of the Holy Spirit the day of the moving of the anointing the day of the manifestation of the power of God we've never been in a day like today we've never been in a time like now when this Lord is pouring out his spirit as never before hallelujah give the Lord a mighty hand of praise Hallelujah. People are looking for answers. People want to see things happening. But you won't see it happen in the supernatural unless you walk in the anointing. Now how do I walk in the anointing? How do I walk like Peter and John when they came in the presence of sickness? Then sickness had to bow. When they came in the presence of depression, depression must bow. Hallelujah. When they came in the presence of hopelessness, then hope had to arise. Hallelujah. 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 I've always prayed to God since a young Christian. I said, Lord, when I stand up and open my mouth, I want to do it in the anointing. Because someone that is sick must be healed. And someone that's got a problem, the problem must be solved. And someone that's got no hope, they must have hope. When I sit with someone in a, in a room and I've got a counsel, I say, God, in my own strength, I'm limited. But I want something to happen. The anointing. I want the anointing on my life. I want to walk in the anointing. I was in the bank, a bank manager, and I applied this. When my clients were sick, I used to call them in the, in the office. Whether they are Christian, Muslim, white, black, whatever they is. I say, man, I'm a man of God. Can I pray for you? I used to close my door. I used to pray. And say, God, to a miracle. I release the anointing. So you can be anointed anywhere. You can be anointed at your work. You can be anointed in the church. You can be anointed in the streets. God wants us to be carriers of the anointing. Hallelujah. Not carriers of something else. But carriers of the anointing. Not carriers of your own ideas. Not carriers of your own uh, uh, ways. Uh, and someone else's ideas. Uh, and someone else's ways. But God wants us to be carriers of the anointing. Hallelujah. Then yokes are going to be shattered in Jesus mighty name. Sometimes you cannot... Distinguish the difference today between who's a Christian and who's not a Christian. Christians lie like the world. They steal. They swear. They commit adultery. I was having uh, some time with Elder Phil this week. He's on his way, by the way, to, to Zimbabwe. And I was speaking to him about the the attack on marriages and the divorce rate, and he googled some numbers. And he said, but Apostle, it's exactly the same. 50% of all the Christian marriages end up in divorce, the same as the world. Why is it? Because we've started to walk in our own ability, in our own knowledge. We've started to walk in what we have. And uh, depend on what we have. It's time that we change our walking. To walk in the anointing. And we will see the supernatural power of God. That we will see that Satan has no hold over the marriages. We will see that Satan cannot move the families. We will see that Satan, his power will be broken because of the anointing. Not because we got money. Not because we got education. Not because we got a good job. Or we got a good house. Or we got a good car. Or we got a, a, a good family. But Satan's hold will be broken because we are walking in the anointing of God. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a mighty
mighty hand of praise. People have, have become too dependent on their money and their status and their fame and their fortune. And Satan is not moved by those things. Uh, Satan is not scared uh, because if you've got money. He's not scared if you're famous. He's not scared if you're a movie star. He's not scared if you're the highest education per educated person in the world. Uh, he's not scared if you save 30 years and 40 years. If you're Pentecostal or you charismatic or you are evangelical. He's not scared of that. But he's scared of the anointing of God because he knows uh, he has some power but the anointing represents superpower in the name of Jesus give the Lord a mighty hand up. hallelujah 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 say Lord I want to walk in the anointing so how do I walk in the anointing how was it that the same guys, Peter, John, they ran away when Jesus was crucified. They denied Jesus when he needed them. They were almost like backslidden. How was it that the same guys, after Pentecost, after the Holy Spirit came and anointed them with fire, with power, they started to walk as new people. They faced the same challenges in a different way. Because they were coming to the temple every day for many years. And that man that was crippled was at that temple door for many years. They seen that problem many years. But you see, they were walking in their natural ability, in their theological understanding of the word of God. But after they were anointed by God, they looked at this problem the same way. But this time, they faced this problem not on their own. They faced this problem with the anointing of God. God wants us to face everything that we do. Face your job. Face your ministry. Face your challenges. Not with your own strength. You're going to come off second. But God wants you to face it in the anointing. How do I walk in the anointing? Number one. You can take these things down. Number one. To walk in the anointing and to have an anointing on your life. First Thessalonians 5.17 You must pray without ceasing. Say pray. If you don't pray a lot, you will not have a high level of anointing. Amen. You can be the best preacher, the best singer, the best musician, the best business person. But if you don't pray, you will not be able to have a high level of the supernatural ability of God. Working on your behalf. You must pray a lot. Pray without ceasing. You know what was the main key in Jesus' life? It was not so much that he was the son of God. That he was chosen to represent God. The main key in Jesus' life that increased the anointing on his life. That when he faced the poor, when he faced the sick, when he faced sin, when he faced lack, he could speak, he could speak to his father. And something would happen. You know what was his main key? Pray. Jesus was more focused on his prayer life and on his preaching life. Because sometimes Jesus was preaching the gospel. And the crowds were flocking. We see at the stage, Jesus would slip away. And we go up to the mountain. Today, we are more concerned 
about our popularity and our fame and our fortune and man's accolades than what we are busy with prayer. Oh, what a powerful word of God that was. And I believe as we receive the word activated in our lives, that is when we position ourselves in order to walk in the greatness of God. In Psalm 93, 1 to 4, it says, The Lord reigns, He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is finally and firmly established. It cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago. You are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up. O oh Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves, mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea. The Lord on high is mighty. And so we see how great God is and how we can walk in His greatness and His great miraculous power by activating this Word of God that we have received this morning. Hallelujah. If you have any questions, if you need counseling, if you need prayer, please contact us on the telephone number appearing on the screen below. We love you from the Church of Restoration. Link up with us, partner with us, come and visit us. We hope to see you soon with the love of of the Lord. This is myself, Beverly Naidu, signing off from the Church of Restoration. Let's receive the benediction of the Lord. Now may the grace of God, the love of Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit remain with each one of us until we see Jesus face to face. And all God's people said, Amen and Hallelujah. God bless you. We love you. Goodbye.